Hi, I'm Claire Wilkins, and I own the Ibogaine Association in Playa de Tijuana, Mexico, which is about 20 minutes from San Diego. And I'm going to be doing a presentation on screening and safety in Ibogaine patients that Alonzo, Dr. Perez, who could not make it, and I put together. And his two main instructions were, stick to the topic and don't swear, Claire. So, <laughs> Dimitri will take up for my slide. All right, so, um, I, okay, so strategies. Preparation, develop situational attention, stimulate teamwork, and compensate for stressful factors. What we do when people first come into the clinic is we are prepared. We make sure we're prepared. <laughs> develop situational attention means that we focus on the client and everything that the client needs individually. And then as a team, we work together uh, figuring out how we're going to treat that client. And what we do is we also compensate for stressful factors once they arrive. We have, these are, you know, addicts who are coming in and you need to be in a state of withdrawal when you're doing Ibogaine and it's a very scary thing to be going to another country and ingesting an extract of an African root and also to be climbing t to the other side of addiction, to be detoxified. And, and I remember for me, I just wanted, I didn't introduce myself, that as a user, for 15 years I was an IV uh, heroin user and I was also on methadone for eight years. And so it's very important for us to make sure that the client feels safe and uh, comfortable and can trust us. That's a picture of our clinic. It's not the best picture, but that's where we are. Uh, we do anticipation, planning, optimization, and information. We make just more planning and preparing, and in terms of optimizing, we want to make sure that we accommodate every client's need. Every person is unique. Every individual is different. And with information, we make sure that they are provided, you know, that they, when someone comes there, that they know what they're doing when they're doing Ibogaine. It's, it's, it's an intense treatment. Uh, it's, you know, a lot of people don't know about it. We make sure that they're informed, educated, that they've done their research. And through all of this, it decreases the morbid mortality and the, it increases the well-being of the patient and the care quality is much better if we do all of that. Uh, the cardiopulmonary function and the psychological state must be evaluated constantly. I've gained effects, you know, the cardiopulmonary uh, functions, and it's important that people are healthy enough to do Ibogaine. And so there's pre-evaluation during the treatment, and then also post-evaluation, we're constantly monitoring. Uh, the relationship <coughs> between the doctor and the patient needs to be a comfortable experience. Um, it's so important that you come to us feeling like you, you can trust us because you know, this, this is, uh, we, we, as addicts, we've, we don't trust. <laughs> and so it's really important that for me, as, as a, a former user, that, that, that the, the patients come and feel really comfortable. Um, so what we do is we, we um, also do our medical history and our paraclinicals. We do labs and EKGs, and I'll go through the specifics of that later. And then we develop a therapeutic plan, all as a team. We have five doctors on staff. There's at least 24, 24 hours a day, there's two doctors always. We have a licensed acupuncturist, a doctor of naturopathy, and um, the majority of the people who work at the clinic have done Ibogaine. Even a doctor, med student, our house cleaners done Ibogaine. Um, therapeutic, and that's with no chemical dependency whatsoever too. So if you want to talk about you know people being really intrigued by something that works for other people beyond just addiction, that's pretty fascinating to me. Um, we developed the therapeutic plan as a team, and we obtained the informed consent, very, 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 very important, the informed consent of the patient, so that they understand everything that they're going to be going through, and that they, you know, and also for our sake, for business and liability reasons, and we make them sign their, you know, um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the consent form to leave before they leave if they want to, and out of We've treated, let's see, uh, it's one year and 10 months that I've owned the clinic. We've treated 100, we've done about 192, 191, something like that. It's, I just counted last week. And uh, <clears throat> so we want to, and only two people have left. And that's one before she got her treatment and one after. So we're pretty successful in our detoxification. Everybody leaves detoxified. Our main objective. For me, when I did Ibogaine, I didn't really feel safe in the, in the situation where I did it. I didn't have a doctor with me. I didn't have people who spoke English. Fortunately, I speak Spanish, but I, it really, really was powerful for me that, you know, 
these people need to feel safe when they're going through this experience. It's, it's like midwifery, you know? Um, screening. So we first start with phone and emails. We do the medical exams, the paraclinicals, the clinical history, and then we develop a treatment plan. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> the clinical history, uh, we go through everything. When they first arrive, basically, you're under a microscope by everyone, and that includes from the doctors down to, I mean, I've had, you know, the, the house manager come to me and say, you know, give me some piece of information that everybody has an input. We're all just a huge team that, you know, is constantly observing what's going on so that we can contribute that to the file and, and to how we're going to be, you know, taking care of the client in the best way possible. So we go through everything, all of their habits, all of their allergies, all of their surgeries, you know, allergies, including food, medications, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, the screening process is very thorough. The doctor spends two to three hours uh, with each client um, going through everything. Uh, let's see here. We screen the illnesses that compromise cardi cardiopulmonary function, heart failure, coronary heart disease, arrhythmias, pulmonary venous thromboembolism, etc. Active infections, you know, um, uh, physical examination. This is what we do. Um, the doctors go through everything. I mean, I've had numerous people tell me that that was the most thorough exam I've ever had. There's one of our doctors doing the exam, Dr. Marquez. We look at their general aspect, their color, how they're, how they're hydrated, their mental state, nutritional state. Of course, people on Monday when they're first coming in, you know, we treat a population that's extremely compromised, and because of our, we're we're in. Uh, we have a clinical setting within a home, it's a private home, we're fully equipped medically, you know, we need to be monitoring every single thing that's going on. And on Monday, most people are really hurting. And, uh, you know, or they're not. They got really loaded before they came. And so we have to wait and wait. Um, Complementary tests, these are the labs and the EKGs. And with the EKGs, the normality in the EKG does not exclude coronary heart disease. There are some abnormalities that lack relevancy in asymptomatic patients. And that can mean that you can have a blockage in a certain part of your heart and we can still treat you. Or you can have even had a heart attack in the past and we can still treat you. Um, our doctors have studied every single paper that's been published. And we've, we talk to people constantly. We're constantly looking at and, and, and improving and looking to see how we can treat people. And we treat some really, we, we treat a lot of clients that other clinics don't treat. Uh, the labs, these, this is just the list of the labs. We, I mean, it's, it's pretty thorough. And then, you know, uh, we do customized requests for certain lab things like, you know, cardiac enzymes, if we think the client may have sign of ischemia, or pancreatic enzymes. We had a 63-year-old Vietnam vet in recently that had a triglyceride level of 1,300 or something like that. and. Uh, so we were really afraid for him, and we got his pan pancreatic enzymes, and he turned out okay. And uh, we got his blood tests every day, actually, and uh, a 63-year-old Vietnam vet was able to come off methadone successfully, uh, which is a beautiful thing. There's a happy guy getting his blood taken. <laughs> we have great phlebotomists. People are always surprised by how quickly they get the blood. Um, EKG, diagnosis and treatment, just exactly what I mentioned before, what we're looking for. We're looking for acute myocardial infarctions, arrhythmias. We've treated clients with arrhythmia, arrhythmias just because you've had that doesn't mean that, you know, or you have that doesn't mean you can't get um, Ibogaine with, at our clinic. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's num numerous compromised patients that, that, we, that we treat. That's uh, one of our clients getting an EKG. We had to shave him after that to really get the EKG <laughs> on the extremities. And we have a portable EKG so that we can take right up to the room when they're in the room. We've, for some clients, we need numerous you know, EKG monitoring. We have cardiac monitoring, defibrillators, <coughs> IVs. As I said, it's a very controlled environment. OK, so as far as the treatments go, we, how we prepare when you're in the state of withdrawal and you're getting ready to, then you're going to get your IV and you've been screened, you've, had, you've been evaluated, you've been approved. 
Uh, we start with pre-medication. We do a prophylaxis for the gastrointestinal symptoms. A lot, one of the, the two most common side effects of ibogaine are ataxia and nausea. And ataxia, we can't really control, <laughs> but with nausea, we can. We, we use a combination of uh, three medications that radically reduce the amount of um, vomiting, and that really, I believe, allows the client to stay in the you know out of body experience and enjoy or enjoy, I believe so, uh, you know, the experience without coming back into your body and having to vomit. There's another theory that vomiting and purging is necessary, so, you know, but this is what we do. Uh, blood clot and PE prevention, heparin, 5,000 units. Uh, we also put in every single client a Heplot catheter. This is what it looks like. Five minutes. I'm almost done. Thanks. And um, what it is is a little catheter that's got a little plastic. It's a plastic catheter that so you can move your arms around and everything. And it allows a port for us to administer any medications while you're on ibogaine. Because while you're on ibogaine, having to try and find a vein and try and do, do anything that you need to do, that's not really cute. Um, but if you have the hep block, we can just you know put it right in. That we can we can if you have the port available, we can administer various medications. We've had to administer atropine for bradycardia, um, even they keep the, the catheter on post-treatment as well so that they can, that we can administer. For the residual withdrawal symptoms, we use NSAIDs that we have. In Mexico, we've got a lot of different medications that uh, they don't have in the United States that really help with pain. And, um, or with benzos, people who are benzo patients, you know, it's, it's to, or for IVs, people who don't, a lot of methadone clients don't want to eat afterwards. I didn't want to eat, you know, and so, you know, we can do fluids with vitamins and such. They're monitored, the clients. The first and most important monitor is the human observer. We're always watching, like I said. And then we have them hooked up to an oximeter, which just attaches to your finger right here. It's not very invasive. And that monitors the oxygen and the heart rate. <coughs> and we take vitals as well. We have the doctors coming in and taking vitals as well. I know that this may sound really clinical, but it's in the context of a really loving and compassionate environment. And this comes from me after being a professional patient and being treated, you know, as though, you know, as I was just another, you know, hospital visitor, et cetera. And we really, really, really try and, and, and use as much as we can on the safety side, including in, in, a, in a loving atmosphere. So we take, we medicate for the nausea, and then we do a test dose. We wait 60 minutes. Um, after the, after the anti-nausea medication so that everything starts to work and then we give a test dose in 30 to 45 minutes after seeing how the client responds we give our full dose and the full dose, how we dose completely also depends individually. Um, you know, we had someone come off methadone with 770 milligrams. We have had someone come off methadone with three or about three grams. So, you know, it, it depends and it's, and, and it's all involved with the safety and the team and how we evaluate that. And uh, we've learned a lot. And we all learn a lot from each other. But we all talk to each other, a lot of the providers. You know, have you done this? Have you treated someone with a naltrexone implant? Or, you know, what would you do with this? And it's very important to stay within the community and get answers. Um, there's Dr. Perez. <laughs> He's back uh, with the client, uh, checking the vitals. Right. Is there a little pointer thing? Yeah. That's in the oximeter, which shows the oxygen saturation and the pulse. Oh, that's a dark picture. Sorry about that. Um, okay, I'm almost done. We monitor constantly, check blood pressure, extremely important. We had to, or we, you know, if, if your blood pressure is really high and super, you know, we, we have to maintain you. We have to maintain, and we have the ability to do that. We have the ability, if you have to come in with an infection, people, a lot of, we're used to lying when we're addicted. And so we want to sound a lot better. You know, yeah, please accept me for treatment. Please. So some people come in with uncontrolled diabetes or blood pressure, et cetera, and so we have to treat that first. Uh, this is me with a client. It's Alex Gray mask on, music happening. It's uh, really important for people to, you know, within, uh, you know for, for us to be there and make sure that they're, because within 45 minutes to three hours, depending on the metabolism of, of the ibogaine, uh, the withdrawal symptoms decrease. And so uh, we're there looking for that and making sure that's going on. We're looking for lots of things. So this is, these are just withdrawal symptoms. And sometimes I lie with them. 
And that's the end of my topic. That's the view of our from a clinic. Uh, do I have a couple more minutes? Or are we done? No. Okay. <laughs> we, have, we have time for questions. Oh, okay, later. Okay, cool. Thank you.